Okay, welcome to the Kennedy Report. I'm Kennedy Hall. This is a quick Sunday edition. Um, I just saw a tweet from Eric Sammons, and it reads, The highest paid employee at Word on Fire has been scrubbed from their website and social media accounts with no reason given. He's allegedly at the center of a potentially very serious cover-up going on at Bishop Barron's ministry. Now, I debated whether or not I wanted to cover this uh, because I figure people will probably make it pretty salacious. Um, but I did read the article and I looked into it and it seems pretty legit. Um, now, I'm not covering this because I think it's, uh, you know, some bombshell surprise. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. How could this happen? I actually wanted to bring it up after I saw this because uh, it makes perfect sense that something like this would happen. And this is not because of the bishop or, or whatever. It's because of the way that these organizations run and the fact that there's prob there are problems in the way that basically, I mean, I know technically there's priests there and the bishop, but it's very much a laity run organization. And there's an article that I'm going to share uh, with you here. And um, this is actually, if you can see this here, this is the tweet from Eric Sammons. And then here's the article. It's from some guy's Substack. I have no idea who he is. He seems like some Catholic journalist. I think he's a little bit of a, a leftist. I don't know. Uh, but in any case, um, it's called Sexual Misconduct and Employee Intimidation at Word on Fire. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, it centers around this fella named Joey Gluer, who I've seen him before. He's basically a, a bodybuilder or something. He's a fella who lost a bunch of weight and found a conversion. That's great. If you read through it, he's a very highly paid employee and essentially... He has been scrubbed from the website. So, for example, he was part of their Catholicism series, um, which you can find here at this link. I think this is an archive one, so it loads slowly. Um, it's their one of their Catholicism series. Anyway, this is an archived one from back in the day. You can see his name, Joseph Glur, is still there. The picture takes a couple minutes to load there, so I won't wait too long. Um, along with the fellow who plays Jesus in the Chosen series. There he is. Mr. Glure, this is like internet in the 1990s. <laughs> um, anyway, there he is. Uh, you've probably seen him before if you're into Word on Fire. Uh, in addition, he's been scrubbed from a bunch of websites. So, for example, if you go here, it shows you that... Um, not that one, sorry. If you go... Um, his testimonies have been removed from YouTube. Okay, you can find that here. Okay, video unavailable. Anyway, so it seems like uh, there has been some, let's call it workplace misconduct. Okay, stop sharing the screen there. Uh, workplace misconduct. And that's not really the major thing I wanted to talk about. The thing I wanted to talk about is we have to learn from the mistakes that we keep making in Catholic organizations. Um, not that Word on Fire is a completely lay-run organization, but in this sort of spirit of the Second Vatican Council, this idea that we live in a church of the laity and so forth, there's been this heavy emphasis on lay people um, being at the center of all these organizations, being the, the faces of all these organizations. And also there's been this desire to really uh, interact with the world in a really secular way. If you think to how the church used to do it, you think about, for example, Bishop Fulton Sheen, who would interact with the world on a secular or on a technological medium like a television, but he did it 100% as a bishop. He never tried to be what the world wanted. He was just a bishop giving conferences and he happened to be theatrically trained, I think. Whereas with Word on Fire, um, they've consistently done what a lot of organizations have done, where they try to mix, you know, what's cool out there, um, What's the hip thing to do? What are people into? What's going to make us look like the secular thing that everybody goes to? How can we be like them? And then we're going to make that Catholic. Now, there's nothing wrong with using certain good things in the culture. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, for example, uh, having a Catholic music festival and you just have a bunch of musicians who may or may not be playing explicitly Catholic music, but it's family friendly, there's mass, and it's a fellowship. That's fine. But when you, when you start making something that almost becomes like a, 
just a secular television organization, if that makes sense. Or, you know, you have this insistence on bodybuilding and, and these things that are very worldly. And you also have this mixing of men and women working together in these organizations where the leadership is not necessarily clear. You're going to run into problems. Why would we expect that in an organization filled with lay people, we would avoid the pitfalls of every other secular organization filled with lay people, whether it be religious or not? And this brings me to my final point. This is why the church always had organizations run by priests and nuns. There's a reason for that. People who have a, a vow of celibacy. It's only when we start to see the massive mixing between the people that are in the secular world and don't have lives where they've taken vows of chastity, where of course you start to see problems. This is not an indictment on Word on Fire. This is an indictment on the methodology that a lot of these organizations, even if they're well-intentioned, have taken. There are, there are skeletons in the closets of all of these Catholic universities, all of these lay organizations uh, or heavily lay-run organizations because they have lay people at them who have their own vices, which is to be expected, but they run them like secular organizations where there are men and women in contact in ways that are inappropriate. Um, there's disordered family lives and things like that that come in because of the insistence on career and so forth. It creates problems. So if anything from this, this thing, again, this is not an indictment on Bishop Barron or anything like that. It's just newsworthy because it's a big organization. Um, this should be a warning. You know, even an organization as well run as Word on Fire, and I, I have my differences with some of the theological things, but I have to admit that it's a very uh, professionally done thing, but you can't escape these pitfalls if you don't run it like a truly Catholic, traditionally Catholic organization. There needs to be priests, there needs to be nuns, there needs to be a separation of single people, uh, married men and women, like this is just how it's always been done. We've lived through the Me Too movement, all this kind of stuff. These things will keep happening unless we learn our lesson. Now I'll finish here. Today is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And today our priests give a wonderful homily um, about uh, vocations and how St. Joseph is essentially the ambassador for vocations. You know, the, tr the best work we can do is obviously the religious life. It's the most efficacious for the world. Um, so it makes sense to think about that on a day like today. And a big part of whether or not somebody will develop a proper vocation will be the element of chastity. That's what our priest said today. And he was bang on about that. And he quoted um, a father, Emmanuel. I can't remember his name, but he wrote a book. Uh, you know, I've got to find it. But um, this is a traditional book from years ago. And he basically said a priest's power is commensurate with the priest's level of chastity. So basically meaning the most pure the more pure the man is, basically the holier and more efficacious he is as a priest. And that also applies, he said, to the religious life as well in a, in a different way, obviously, with they don't have uh, ordained religious powers, but you know what I'm saying. And um, if we truly want to evangelize the culture, organizations like Word on Fire, again, well-run places, they've done some good stuff. I'm not, this is not me beating up on them. But we're not going to avoid the pitfalls of the world unless we do things the way the church has always done them and scrap this nonsensical uh, shake hands with the world, new evangelization stuff that just isn't working. Because this could be the tip of the iceberg. It could be that another massive Catholic organization, one that's in all the LA circles and uh, on secular news outlets and stuff and winning awards and all this kind of stuff, you know, big YouTube channel. And it could be the end of it. Because if there's one uh, problem going on there, there could be a thousand more. This is how these things always happen. So let this be a warning. And pray to St. Joseph the Worker today and on all days for vocations. Because if we had more vocations, if we had holier families, fostering holiness, purity, and chastity in the home, then we would have more vocations. And in fairness to organizations that are doing their best with what they have, we wouldn't have to leave so much of this intense evangel evangelical leadership to lay people, which is inappropriate. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this is just a quick uh, off-the-cuff one today here for uh, Sunday. So thanks for joining us. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.